Welcome to Rodos Underground Trio episode 80 something. I don't really keep track of them when I'm doing this and uh, goes beside the point anyway. Uh, once again, in Underground Trio, we go through three different bands and the releases mostly uh, rather unknown ones, that is. And uh, these are bands with not too much albums out. I, if I remember correctly, I would say all these have like a uh, maximum two albums out. That's kind of the scope uh, where Underground 3 really ends. When you go uh, more active, more bigger, whatever, well, then you end up having your own episodes. Anyhow, um, once again, in my own opinion, according to my own opinion, we'll go from worst to best. And this time we have um, Black Metal from Germany, uh, Doom Death from Italy, and uh, Epic Doom Schlass Heavy Metal from United States. If you can guess my order in this case, Kudos to you. So, let's start. First, we'll go to Germany with a band called Asgadem. Now, this is a band I've pre featured a couple of times, three in total, before this one, if I recall correctly. And uh, the style of this German black metal hasn't really totally nailed it, but it has always shown some promise. All right, this is really, really stuck, this jewel gate. So, let's not break the jewel gate here. This is how the CD looks. Pretty looking CD from, uh, you know, uh, Darkness Shall Rise label. Then on the back side, you might have seen this on some of the shirts. Well, a very close design to this one. And then we have, of course, have the booklet, which has some of these designs. Also, uh, once upon a time, the band actually sent me a... Let's add more light here. It seems like this is getting a little grainy. So once upon a time, this band actually sent me a shirt with some of these um, similar symbols and all that stuff. Thank you for the band. And it's been an interesting journey for this band. Now, don't want to be the negative show here, but that's exactly what I'm going to be, unfortunately. Now, this time, Askedem with the second album has gone more and more into the world of atmospheric black metal, even to the point where it's kind of a borderline black metal. Don't get me wrong, this is atmospheric black metal in its very core, but when you go deeper and deeper into this album, you start question where actually black metal ends and when something else begins, be it dark metal or just, I don't know, atmospheric metal, post-black, what have you. I would say this is on the very, very uh, border of things. You can call it post-black, but I wouldn't mind if you call it just atmospheric black metal. But that's how far from the very core, from the very basic black metal you have gone from. Because, in fact, this is a kind of a thing, a kind of a release where you have, of course, the black metal essence, the very basic things. But it really doesn't sound much of a like, typical black metal and all that. I would say this is kind of a light black metal, diet version, if you will. Or just atmospheric black metal closing the territory known as post-black. Because there is very, very little of what is left from, you know, the basic 1990s sounding black metal. And even less so when we're talking about the 80s. So you don't really have the danger, the violence, the raw sounding, cavernous, dungeon like things here. And then you're asking, so what there is, if it doesn't sound really dark or violent or primitive or outright dangerous and all, what there is left? And I can say, like, exactly, very little. Now, when we're talking about atmospheric black metal and the whole school of it, the whole sound of it, there it kind of boils it down. Meaning, you don't have so much aggressive riffing, not even memorable melodies often, but more like, let's keep the uh, atmospheric parts created. Let's keep the atmospheric parts built. And that's what this is. This is just about creating the atmosphere. And when you remove a lot of those core essence out of it, Beat, production, vocals, whatever, there's very little left. However, I would say this definitely has certain black metal elements and mostly it's about the crude production. It's not really super raw, but when you compare it to, say, more polished, more highly produced albums, this, of course, goes more towards the lo-fi department rather than the hi-fi thing. But it's not very raw. And that's why I partially put this on the verge of things. It definitely has some black metal essence parts. And then there is lots of like, uh, I don't know why this is not more, I don't know, rawer than this. Why this is more violent. It's just 
kind of a atmospheric black metal with not that good riffs, to be honest. I mean, there's so much potential here, but it's not reaching. It's almost like some of these songs are unfinished. Like you have the atmosphere, now you need something really, really cool. Be it keyboard parts, be it interesting melodies, be it some very, very cool vocal parts. And none of that is there. It's almost like the foundation is there, but the actual good songs are missing. Unfortunately so, because in fact, and like I said, this is me going to be the negative Joe. This is probably the weak, weakest uh, Askedem release so far. It's not useless. It's just like the antithesis of being memorable. Then we have Doom Death from Italy. This is actually from 2021, so a little bit older to the party, being on the big pile of review albums waiting for its turn. Autumnal Rides by Morticula Rex. Two guys who have a kind of a gothic look if you go for the band photos and all. So they're already pointing out, yes, we are not your next black metal thing. Even though there's tons of things you can figure out from the cover, you could really consider this to be black metal thing or, I don't know, even epic doom or whatever. Plenty of things you can figure out from the cover. But this is that doom. And first I was thinking, is this really that doomy? Or then again, is this really that much that metallic? And once I was like through the whole album, first couple of times, I was like, yeah, it is indeed uh, putting together both parts. The thing here is, uh, this 30 minutes or 32 or whatever minutes of a thing is combining the kind of a old school 1990s, early mid 90s kind of a stuff where you have the kind of a tragic elements of the doomier parts. That is that doom. Think about My Dying Bride, Catatonia, Anathema and the like from that era. And then you have, of course, those death metal vocals. Even the sound is more like early 90s, mid 90s kind of a death metal thing. But there is so much tragic parts and slow tempo. It doesn't really give you the more aggressive and heavier, brutal, darker aspects of, well, 1990s death metal. So it's putting these two different things together and making it sound, in a way, quite interesting. Unfortunately, the more spins you give it, the kind of a more obvious it is. This ain't no made, this ain't made of killer songs or interesting parts. I mean, there are parts here and there which kind of get you going and then they kind of let you down. I don't mean bad or negative, anything like that, but I'm saying these riffs and these songs don't really take you that far. When you compare this to, say, more classic names of the given genre, the more obvious it is. But if you're a fan of Doom Death, don't be shy. Give this one a go. And the best of the pile, I would put it into more um, traditional heavy metal department, but I get it why people would say it's kind of an epic doom. This is Crypt Sermon with the Stygian Rose. And uh, this features some really great heavy metal vocals. Doesn't really matter if you go for epic doom or heavy metal when it comes to vocals, it is exactly that. You have a kind of a Ronnie James Dio vibe into it. And yes, this sounds epic. This sounds dramatic and never aggressive. That is, this is definitely tapping to the veins of epic doom and heavy metal. Now, I think it's more like a nitpicking thing, whether you put this into more certain given genre or you just go with both. Because both things, in my opinion, apply here. Um, the first band I was thinking of when I was listening to this album is the Swedish band Sorcerer. I would say Sorcerer, Sorcerer is the better version of this band and these are basically for the same kind of audience. Then again, my colleague actually sa said it very different ways, but still talking about the same band. He said Sorcerer is actually the lamer or not as good version of Crypt Sermon. So I guess it depends from which corner you come from, which kind of preferences you have from epic doom or traditional heavy metal. But this album you can expect good production with really good vocals and definitely at least decent songwriting. Not for everybody. If you're looking for faster tempo or more brutal approach to metal, be it death metal, black metal, whatever metal, uh, might not be your cup of tea. But if you have a soft spot for, you know, epic doom or traditional heavy metal, both in in. Uh, optimal cases. This is definitely for you to check out. So, Crypt Sermon from United States, give it a go. All these bands are, of course, included in the description box with the respective links. So, give it a go, whatever uh, ways you prefer. I mean, if you like all of these given styles, go check them out all individually. Or if you just go for cherry picking, 
do that. Now off you go, more reviews coming you coming for you very, very soon. Take care and stay metal.